Hi there, I'm Shanley Tenai, a Tampa-based professional organizer, KonMari consultant, and member of the National Association of Productivity and Organizing Professionals. I also have experience as a contained home organizer with the Container Store, and I'm a certified personal stylist specializing in curating wardrobes. From construction sites to closets, I do it all. Here's a little more about me. I worked at the University of Arizona for 15 years. I played flute and was in marching band. I love dogs. I drove a red 69 Mustang convertible in college. I've lived in four states and have two teenage boys. And I helped my father-in-law build a custom closet on my house. It took over a year and I lived through it with Visqueen tacked over the window for months. With 30 plus years of experience, starting at eight years in my dad's garage, working with individuals, small businesses, large corporations, and now on the internet, I was spurred to invest in certification of the KonMari method. With less than 385 consultants in a world with about 8 billion people, this method is at the cutting edge of an organizing lifestyle trend sweeping nations. 43% of Americans describe themselves as disorganized, and I've spent my entire life reorganizing other people. Because of that, I felt compelled to pursue organizing as a profession. The average person spends 55 minutes per day, which comes to 14 full days a year, looking for things they know they have but can't find. My mission is to guide and teach clients how to live in a fully functional and streamlined environment for the rest of their lives. The current pandemic has helped the world realize we are in a crisis of stuff. The storage unit industry has grown 81% since 2000. You can see the volume of self-storage units in, in the country would fill the Hoover Dam more than 26 times, and the self-storage industry is worth over $30 billion a year. This is three times Hollywood box office gross. And around 10% of Americans pay over $1,000 a year on storage. However, change is possible, and that's where we come in. You may recall George Carlin observing that a house is just a pile of stuff with a cover on it. UCLA's Center on Everyday Lives of Families conducted a study of contemporary suburban America where 32 Los Angeles families opened their doors to SELF's researchers. They found a staggering number of possessions and an array of spaces and furnishings that serve as the stage for multiple family activities and tell us a lot about who we are as a society. We're being conditioned through marketing to go get more stuff, buy stuff, find a place to keep it, go get more stuff and find more places to keep it. Even better, put it all on display so everyone else can see how much you have. This is the opposite of how Marie Kondo sees a home. The goal is the, of the Marie Kondo method is to help the world live a tidier life. The course objectives here are going to be to understand the Kamari method, to identify the five stages of the Kamari method, to learn how to fold clothes using the Kamari method, to learn how to create a unique storage system for your client using the Kamari method, and how to learn to effectively transfer the KonMari method to your client's needs. Based on the life-changing magic of tidying up by Marie Kondo, clients use the KonMari method to work through possessions in the following order by location, clothing, books, papers, kimono, and sentimental. The KonMari method encourages you to re-evaluate your relationship with possessions and reframes your approach to help you keep things with confidence rather than throw things away. The goal is to surround yourself with items that bring you joy and make your heart happy. The definition of organize is to arrange into a structured whole or order. You'll wanna use a system that will be harmonious and organic to your client. You're going to design a unique version of what organizing is so your client can be more effective, efficient, and happy, which is really the key. I bet you run into clients just like I do who may not be satisfied with their situation. So we wanna to look to their style to ensure that they are a happy, satisfied client that will call you back and refer you to others. Organizing styles vary based on a lot of factors. 
So you'll want to customize your stored solutions appropriately. People all have different perspectives, values, and even belief systems that they bring to a tidying project. So many times, clients will just throw all their things into a new container and hope their home will be Instagrammable. We all know this doesn't work. First, we've got to cover the six rules of the Kanmari method. We're going to commit yourself to tidying up. We're going to imagine your ideal lifestyle. We're going to finish discarding first. We're going to tidy by category, not by location. We're going to follow the right order, and we're going to ask yourself if it sparks joy. Then, recall, we're going to start organizing our clients by category, not location. The client will touch each item to see if it sparks joy. They should feel what Marie calls a zing in their body and their favorite possessions, and like they're being pulled down for things that don't spark joy. But first, one of the key tools to the Kanmari method is how we fold things. And you'll see as we move through the categories how this folding method can help your client's storage solutions. The goal when folding is to make a rectangle. You'll see that we fold the arms in for a shirt first, then continue folding in and folding over until you make a small rectangle. This rectangle should be able to stand up by itself. Then you'll fold everything into a file folding system just like you do with your file with your paper in your file folders. The first category is clothing. And in this category, we're going to gather all of the clothing together together in one place, which will up the shock value because of the quantity. This is supposed to encourage clients to understand how much of each kind of clothing they have by seeing it all at once. Here's a couple of ways that you can help your clients with clothing opportunities. Using the Kanmari method, you're going to ask how they fold their clothes. You can suggest the file folding method to save space. You can see what a difference it makes having these folds, these clothes folded versus just tossed into a drawer. They're able to get a lot more into a drawer and these customized divided containers in the drawers will really help them store more. The next category is books. Same principle here, we're gonna follow with, as with clothing. We're gonna create a pile of all the books in their home for the shock value. It's a common misunderstanding that Marie Kondo wants you to get rid of all of your books. This is not true. What she actually wants you to do is make sure you're keeping your books with confidence rather than out of a sense of obligation. Here's a couple of ways you could create custom book storage opportunities for your clients. Wouldn't this chair be an amazing visual and also library opportunity in a client's any room really would work but in their living room where it's on display and then imagine the referrals you're going to get from creating this custom solution for your client in a smaller space like next to this tv you're going to want to put up thinner shelves where they can display things like records that are important or artwork that is important for paper, which is the third category, the same principles apply again. So we're going to pull out all of the paper in the home and then go through these key questions that you see here. Can I get this online? When was the last time I referenced this? Could I get just Google this information? And what is the am actual amount of work I would have to do to find this if I discarded it? This will make a big difference in how much paper your clients are going to keep. A couple of ways that you could get customizable paper solutions include creating spaces where you're going to put up a cork board for people to put up papers in their closet or inside of a door, uh, uh, door inside. And so another option here is these bookshelves that you see inside a, a client's home or down there on the left of the desk. And then on the right side, you could create individual slots for different kinds of paper to help them categorize their paper in an office. The next category is kimono. That means miscellaneous in Japanese, and that's going to be anything else that's in the home that isn't one of the other five, four categories, the fifth one being sentimental. So this includes 
all of the other items in your house, in your garage, in your linen closet, in your kitchen, in your bathroom, your music, your laundry room, anything in the attic or your basement. So as you can imagine this category typically takes the longest. Ways that you can help your client with kimono include customizable storing opportunities here. Wouldn't it be great to find every tool within a few seconds in the garage? How about hanging a pegboard and using zip ties, zip bags and ties to store games? This makes the games easy to take to another room or to even throw in a bag and travel with. The last category, and typically the hardest, as you can imagine, is sentimental. The reason the categories go in this order is to strengthen our choosing muscle. Starting with clothes, it's people are not as usually sentimentally attached to clothing and then working your way towards sentimental. This is the category where you have the most impact with personalized solutions. You can do archival drawers for sentimental items. You could do display cases for things like trophies or memorabilia and collections. You could do cedar closets for specialty clothing. You could do felt or vel velvet lined drawers for jewelry. Other opportunities include this jewelry display or in the garage, put up some shelves so that their sentimental containers will be stored clearly and easily labeled. The, the next thing that people often have issue with about the KonMari method is that you have to thank your things. But the idea behind touching each item in a category is to help the client feel a sense of connection with the item. If they don't, they should consider why they're keeping it. Each item in a home should spark joy for the client. Understanding why many utilitarian items are necessary in a home, you can still choose a hammer or a vacuum cleaner in a color or a style that makes your heart happy when you see it or use it. If you do decide to pass on an item during the tidying marathon, we say thank you and goodbye to show our respect and gratitude because it served its purpose in your life. There are many, many places currently accepting items for donation. Some options include local women's shelters and veterans homes. We've got lots of e-waste facilities for electronics and food pantries for food donations. www.recyclingcenters.org is a great resource for finding centers near you. Next, we're gonna talk about some of the don'ts. Thinking about possessions in this new way can be hard. I get it. So like me, using this mini jackhammer from the roof, not a good idea, right? Here's a few don'ts for when you start to help your clients with their tidying process. We're gonna not be too hard on ourselves or our clients. We're gonna, we're gonna encourage them not to keep things out of guilt or that they might or they should or they'll use it someday. We're not gonna start with photographs or sentimental items because again, strengthening that choosing muscle. We're going to encourage them not to be afraid of letting go. We're going to encourage our clients to uh, not make decisions for others. It's important that each person who owns the possession have a say in that item. And we're going to also make sure we don't fear the trash can. And last don't is don't think that perfection is the end goal. That's not the goal. So next we're going to go over a couple of do's. Some of the do's include helping clients with their time horizons. This is how close in time something needs to be for someone to be motivated into action and their temporal discounting, which is the idea of eating one marshmallow now versus waiting and then getting two later. Another couple do's include being sure to check in with your client and focus on long-term goals. It's important to know what they're thinking is important for them, and that way you can best design customizable solutions that will work for them. So clients come to us with long-term goals with things like, this office is kind of a wreck, I'd like to get it more organized, or I will have a promotion that I'm looking for, I wanna become more productive so I have a shot, or I'd like to have more people over to my house without it being a really big production to get it ready or I'm downsizing or moving and I need to take care of some of these things. So in things like your closet, you're gonna look into the future for like 30 pairs of shoes. 
are we going to also have 40 later? So we're going to need to make sure we can adjust and plan for some extra space for those shoes that are going to show up later. This is where you might want to also ask about their shopping habits, very politely, of course. So I'm sure you can see there are pros and cons to using this method. And in your business, you can remember our goal is to create strategies and storage spaces that will more effectively allow our clients to do what they have to do. We want them to maximally to be maximally organized and have planned spaces. Time flies when you're having fun. So let's make these spaces fun or at least not boring. We don't want and, and then our clients won't want to be in them. So I'm going to thank you for the privilege of being here today. I do workshops and virtual organizing and would be honored if you would refer me to your clients in need. Last, we're going to go over the, and summarize the things we've learned today, which is to use file folding for anything, linens, clothing, anything to save space. You're going to check in with your clients and focus on their long-term goals. Thank you.